So we've seen how we can make a open a new page. Let's see how we can open an entire story that with multiple pages that we can keep in one folder that'll connect them all. That'll make our work a lot easier for when we are working on multiple pages. So if we have a file open, let's go up to file and close it. I'm not going to save this. And we're going to open a new file. Just click File, New. And the only difference this time, I'm going to leave the settings to the classic comic settings that I made before. And the only change I'm going to make now, though, is I'm going to select multiple pages. And if you're using the Pro version, this I don't believe this will. you'll have this option, but this will be in the EX version. So click multiple pages. And you can set your number of your pages. I believe the limit that it sets is 100 pages. Let's try 101 just to see. Yeah, it won't let me type higher than 100. So if you do have a story that is longer than 100 pages, that's okay. We can just break it into different sections. If it was 180 pages, you could have a file that's 100 and then another one that's 80. And then I'll show you later how you can connect those all as one story as a PDF file or whatever form you want to export it as. So our binding is for print. It just helps us when we look at the uh, the story folder. It'll it'll give us a preview and kind of let us know if we're on the left or the right page and so on. So I'm going to click left binding because that's standard for American comics. Right binding is for cha um, Japanese comics. And again, this is Japanese software, so I think it defaults to right binding. You want to change that. And then whatever your first page is, if it's on the left or the right, if it's the first page in a just an entire comic, then it's probably going to start on the right. But that, that depends on wor what you're working with and what your material and so on. So I'm just going to set this to two pages, or actually four pages, to show how this works. If you want to add story information, you can do this here and have it appear on the page. I do not want any story information or page numbers on the page, so I'm just going to leave that blank. And... Once you've done that, you can pick where you want your file to be stored. I'm going to put it with my course materials. And that's fine, somewhere in there. And just call this test story. And click OK. It'll take a second to load because it is creating several pages rather than just one. And then it'll give you this, which is your story manager. And if this is ever not showing up and you have like a file open, you can find this going story and uh, page manager. And that'll open this up again. So to actually work on these pages, you just need to click on whatever page you want to work on. Let's click on the first page and it'll open it up over here. Now it's, it's in a separate uh, window, but you can always just drag it. You can put it in the same window. You can have this however you want. It's really up to you. So I kind of like having it in a separate window like this and having my story over on the left so that I can kind of hide the story if I need more room or uh, kind of spread it out. But this is kind of my standard layout. You can arrange it how you like. And let's open another page too. Let's see how we can do this. So yeah, you can just work on um, your stories and jump around from page to page and then jump around back and forth. And that is essentially how your stories work. And you can have as many pages open as you want, or you can close pages and reopen them, etc. And that is the story function.